My name is Russ Jeffords. I own and operate this 100-acre farm in Gray, Maine. Join me and my staff as we host weddings, concerts, trade shows, and business functions. What a beautiful day! Welcome to Stonehenge! Sponsored by True Value. True Value Hardware, 97 Shaker Road, Gray, Maine. And by BSF, Blue Seal Feed, at 43 Main Street, Wyndham, Maine. clear of the fact that it's not Stonehenge because we don't walk around with trees on our heads. We're not druids. So the fact is, we, I looked on the property and see what we had that I could kind of come up with a name and I, I saw a lot of stone walls. So I said, well, I don't want to say it's stone wall, but what other name I could use for that wall? Uh, is there like a bush or, oh, wait a minute, hedge. Hedge, stone, stone hedge. Morning, everyone. Morning. We, we got a busy day today. I want you to know that uh, there's a lot of stuff happening. I just love working here. I don't care what Russ wants me to do. I can pick apples, I can play music, I can clean up the stalls. I just love it here. Well, especially, we really want to focus on weddings. We've got a um, major band coming here today. That's why I wanted to talk to you, Lou, about that we're, we're auditioning for this one wedding. They said they wanted this real good country band, bluegrass style, and I'm, I'm, I'm wanting them to come in around 11 o'clock. I take care of the animals, I take care of all the electrical work around here, I take care of the shop, keep the shop clean, I help run events, setting up tables and chairs and parking cars and chauffeuring people back and forth to the parking lot. Just, there's a lot of things to do, it's a tough job. Anyways, that basically what I want to talk about is that we do have different Wedding styles, that's one style of a wedding. It's going to be more like of a bluegrass concept, but I've got some other uh, weddings coming up there. I'm the guy with all the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's all about. We are a musical family here, and I'm calling ourselves a family because we're, we all have common themes together. We all love music, and, and this is what we're trying to bring up, and what we have is music. No matter what we do, we still end our lives with the music. I know Lou, especially, you were brought up in, in the music with your father, with the, the fiddles and things. And, 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 you know, here's something. This guy's been inducted into the Hall of Fame of Country in the state of Maine just last year. So it's pretty good. Let's give him a hand. Good job, Lou. I come from a long line of uh, musicians, fiddlers mostly. My grandfather came down from Quebec. Uh, the only thing he had on him was a fiddle. Taught my dad how to play, who taught me. Started playing guitar when I was seven years old. And music's been my whole life. Met all my friends through music. And, uh, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I play guitar, fiddle, banjo, mandolin, a little bit of everything. Probably uh, more guitar and fiddle than anything else. We're having um, all kinds of um, concerts this year. We're going to be doing a lot of concerts. I know that, the, that, that there's bands out there, and I, I'm going to look to you as far as guidance on who we're going to get in here to have for concerts. I know that uh, I'd like to get back in here. Hal Ketchum, he's, uh, he was here before, and he's, and he's just a great player. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work on this as the, years, uh, as the time goes on. That allots us to it. <laughs>
What's going on here, Lou? Look, um, the band you hired didn't show up yet, so I took the initiative to hire, you know, call a few friends just to be on the safe side. And so let's see, we got a little time to work things out. And if, and if we do, it work sounds great. We're, we're, Good. we're out of the wa hot water, okay? Well, I'm glad you did that because I'll tell you, I was getting nervous about that. I was too. So. All right, well, let's see what you got. Come on. Come on, boys, can't dogs get on high? Watching the log go down the Kitty Bank River, sitting on the green grassy hill, and my heart I would ever be hidden by the river, walking the log from the mill. Jiffy Car Wash. 396 Main Street, South Portland, Maine. Unlimited wash plan starting at $17.97 a month. It's Jiffy Car Wash. We've owned Great True Value now for 12 years. 12, yes. 12. Feels like 20. Feels like 20. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for the most part, I do the ordering for the store. Jill and I both work the floor. Uh, we have eight employees, uh, very good staff. Jill does the books for the most part. I handle the financing, behind the scenes stuff, payroll, uh, scheduling. Our kids are very involved. They're um, usually here on the weekends when they can be. Owning a small business in Maine is challenging, but we really enjoy what we do. It's a lot of fun. We have great customers that come in. We have good relationships with them and just really enjoy the area. And we actually love working together <laughs> most of the most time. Most of the time. <laughs> So we'd like to invite you down to Great True Value Hardware Store. We're located at 97 Shaker Road. It's really just a great store for a great town. Black Brook Woodworks, Route 202, Gray, Maine, at Stonehenge Farm. And it's country at its best. For booking weddings and special events, give us a call at Stonehenge Farm. My name is Frank Pote, executive producer here at NEP. And thank you for watching the broadcast pilot series, Stonehenge. We thought it was a great idea to package this up and bring it to you to show you how a group of people in Maine can come together with an idea and try to build it. And we thought it would be great to build it right in front of you. I want you to uh, stay tuned because I'm going to show you or tell you how NEP will present a program where you can make money at home by selling advertising for NEP. So right now, let's go back to the uh, second segment of Stonehenge. Okay, that takes care of that out. Um, now, before we start going up on the shop, because we do got to get materials, yep. we got to go over to uh, uh, True Value yep. and pick up some supplies on that. And after that, while we're out, we might as well go pick up some feed for the animals over to Blue Seal Feed. We got a couple things I want to get. I want to get the screws, heads for the actual head that we're making up for the chopper for the pebbles. We got to make that by that basket. And I'm hoping that he's got that certain kind of strap. 
and then just kind of like pick it up and roll it into a, a circle and then tag it in like that by overlapping yeah, straps. So we'll That's how it makes sense. Then we can make a bottom for it and then put cheesecloth in it and I think we're golden. Yeah. Alright, so we're, we're almost ready to get up to true value here. So hopefully they'll have all the stuff. If not, we'll have to order it. Good morning, Russ. Hey, Al. How are you? Good. How about you, Ron? Good, good. What a great day on this first fall day of the year here. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's happening? The uh, reason why we're here is that we have uh, an apple press that I was borrowing from my neighbor, and it's about a 150-year-old press. And I didn't like the way it's designed. I want to try to do my own style. I got so many apples on my property this year that it's a shame not to do something with my apples instead of letting them fall on the ground. So, and I didn't like the way that 100-year-old uh, machine was set up. So we're going to think about making our own. And I knew this would be the best place to go because you can either have it here or you find it, whatever you need. And that's what I like about you doing it. That, that's an important factor that I don't have to run around to different places to find stuff. So first of all, I need to do is I need to have stainless steel screws that we and screw down into that block. Yep. This is the block that I'm making up to go through a shaft. Have you got those around that we can oh, look sure. at? Oh, sure. Maybe yep. we can go look at those first, see if they're going to be oh, what, sure. what I need. We can do that. Okay, good. Go take a look. Okay. Go down the nuts and bolts here, right? Okay. Take a look. That's all I'm asking for. And so the little sharp edges on them so they'll be able to cut the apples better. Oh, yeah. What do you got for yep. something like that? This is all stainless here, and I think the ones you're looking for would be similar to this right here. Yeah, that's perfect for the size like that. The flat head is sharp. Something like this. Well, I don't know. That's not big enough. I need to make that a circle. And it's got to be like a two foot diameter. Oh, actually, yeah, so if you get something a little bit longer than that. Okay. How about this one right here? Oh, yeah. That'll do it. It'll wrap around almost twice. Perfect. For I you? think so. I think they're going to be great for that because when I have those on a maple, I can just make a little basket and wrap them around screw screwing individually. Perfect. Appreciate that. Oh, you bet. Hey, Russ, how are you? Good, how about you, Jill? Fine, thanks. Did you so find what? everything you needed today? Yeah, for the most part, I All found right. everything I could do for right now. And so, don't forget, we're going to be having that bonfire, so if you can show up, that would be good to so bring some s'mores with you. Okay, All right. All right, like a bag. So, thank you very much. Thank and you guys you. have a great day. You too, thanks. thank you, Russ. Here's your receipt. Oh, got to have that. And there you go. Thanks, All right, Russ. Take care. Have a good day. Hey Al, where are you now? Daylight's burning. We gotta get going. Well, we got a start on that. Anyway, at least we get some of that stuff going, and by the time we get all that other stuff finished, and maybe the other stuff will be brought in uh, when, when Rod said that he'd have to order it. But that's okay. You know, at least we got a start on the whole program. But right now, we're going to focus on the fact that I'm almost out of feed, and I've got to go to Blue Seal, so we might as well go there now while we're on the road. Yeah. All right? Hello, ladies. Good, how about you? Oh, good. Good. Beautiful day out. Oh, it's just a gorgeous day. What can we get for you? I'm here to pick up some feed for my animals. Okay. I want a uh, llama alpaca and a bag of course 14. Okay. I also want to order two buckets that don't freeze in the wintertime, the rubber ones, preferably because of uh, the animals don't finally do good on the plastic. They break, whereas the rubber a little bit more. So I want to order at least two of those. He did rubber buckets. That's a hard one to say. He did rubber buckets. He did rubber buckets. Oh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> hey, Hollis, can I have a llama alpaca pellet and a course 14, please? One llama alpaca pellet and one course 14. And you are all set. Have a fantastic cool. day. You have a great day. All right, well, we're on the road to get back and we'll feed those critters. Now we got the uh, grain and feed for them. Yeah, we were able to get the buckets. Well, they didn't have them in stock. They said they were on their way, so they'll call me when they get them in, so I'll have them in for the winter. We still got time before it gets too cold. But the blue seal feed is uh, the best. They always take care of you. I like the girls in there. They're very friendly. 
and they're nice to look at too. Blue Seal Feeds, 43 Main Street, Wyndham, Maine. Excellent service, courteous people, and top of the line products. It's Blue Seal Feeds in Wyndham, Maine. Blue Seal Feeds, 43 Main Street, Wyndham, Maine. Hi, Frank Pote here, executive producer at NEP. And thanks for watching the broadcast pilot premiere of the series Stonehenge. Now, on the last break, I was uh, going to tell you a bit about how to make money at NEP. And all you have to do is send an email to NEP at main.rr.com and we'll get you out a package to show you exactly how easy that can be. You'll be selling products like 30 second spots, vignettes, uh, infomercials, uh, documentaries, and they're not just for historical places and people anymore. They could be for families or for business as well. So send us an email, nep at main.rr.com and we'll send you out a package that explains how you can make money selling advertising. Now, right now, we're going to send you back to the final segment of Stonehenge. And I believe, as I remember, John was hiding and there's a campfire, which I'm going to be interested in. So let's get back to the series Stonehenge. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I gotta go feed the animals. Don't worry. Come here. You're gonna be a good boy. Get over here, Oliver. All right, I'm gonna give this hay away. You want your buddies to have it? I know you don't like them. Fine. Oliver, you're missing out on all this hay. There you go. Now what? Now what are you gonna do? Are you gonna change your mind? Come here. Come here. Oliver. You ain't gonna get, <laughs> you better not kick your ass up to me. Come here. <laughs> you just know, you just know. <laughs> Forget it. Come on, get out of the way. Come on, get, 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 get out of here. What in the world is the matter with you ladies? You leave me any eggs, huh? I know some food. Come on, girls. There you go. All kinds of good food there. Now get out of the way while I check my stuff. Whoa. Ooh. Now, get in here and do your job, ladies. And that's how you get eggs in the morning. My carrot cake. Hey, Al, get in here. We gotta get down here and finish this meeting. I'm looking for my carrot cake. Never mind the carrot cake. Nobody cares about it. Oh, yeah, one more point. John? Yes. Stop hiding. We all know you're there. <laughs> Just have more work and less play, we'd get more stuff done. I love camo. I love to hide. I don't know why John keeps hiding. Besides, he's not that good at it. Probably a party of 90 people, so we're all tenting out there. So we've got to make sure there's plenty of firewood and make sure that there's rings out there. So, John, will you get out of the woods and put your shirt on? We got security to do for crying out loud.
what can I say? I'm really good at it. <laughs> okay, that takes care of what we're going to be doing in the future. Now, the next thing today is called apples. Have you noticed one thing about the trees that we got out here? We've got probably about 20 apple trees, and they're all different kinds. I mean, the guy who planted them 100, 200 years ago, they were, that was their natural way of drinking things, is to make their own apple cider, and therefore turned into adult drinks and things. John, don't get any ideas, all right? <laughs> so anyway. Last year, John. <laughs> yeah, like, right, remember last year? We found you in the woods somewhere, so, okay? So anyways, let's take making sure that um, I'm going to, I've got from my next door neighbor, better way to do this is to have an apple press. And he's got a 150-year-old apple press, but it needs to be repaired. Good thing we're able to have a cabinet shop and work on them now, because I want you up there working on making our own. We're going to take this and use some of the truths and, and things like that, but I've got better ideas how I want to do it for our own. But we'll use his in the meantime, because we, we have no time. We've got to get those apples picked. picked Guess what? Guess who's picking them? Uh, can you, yeah, can you, can you climb ladders? You, you know, camouflage yeah, people. right. But anyways, I want, okay. we've got to start getting as many apples as we can, okay. because that's what's going to make the apple cider. We're going to be up there working in the shop, but in the meantime, while we're working the shop, you've got to get them ready for us. All right? All right. Make those inch and a quarter. That should be the right kind for that staves. Okay. Hey, welcome to my shop. Remember earlier I was telling you about we have a lot of uh, apple problems today because this year it's a bountiful season for the apples. You'll see it anywhere. We've actually had trees that our limbs have broken down. We've got a lot of overgrowth of apples. So I said, well, better use to do it is to make apple cider. And nobody can say that they don't like apple cider. Is that true? So before we get, what we had is my next door neighbor. We, he brought in this old 100-year-old apple cider press. And we're going to use that for a while. But, but we're going to take examples from what it's used for. Because we, can, we, we think we can do it a little bit better and a little bit more smoother and faster with maybe modern-day technology. I want to show you what we're really working on. This is what they call an apple press. The only thing changed on this apple press has been this motor. Because um, back in 150 years ago, we didn't have motors. There was, they maybe had the one lungers or something like that. But what they did is that they, they had put all this together with, with uh, wood and they made a shaft so they could actually, this is nothing but teeth on this. It, it chops up the apples as you put in. This is the actual piece you put in so you can throw the apples in. Just like that. So you just throw them in there and, and then as that rolls back and forth, it chews it up. And it comes down into a basket, and this is what Al's working on now. And we put cheesecloth in there so the juice can flow through the cheese, uh, the cloth. And then over here is, after we get done with the basket, we're going to be putting it under here. And then we have a cover to it. And back then, the, the, instead of jacks, we're going to have uh, actual, um, you know, hydraulic pumps. But, uh, we're going to do on ours, but this was done by a screw. So you can just, once that goes into the basket, you tighten it up, tighten up, and all the juices come through. And the only other thing that my neighbor asked and requested is that I put an actual stainless steel pan in here. So when the juices, I've got to modify it a little bit so it fits down there. But when the juices come out, it comes out through here into a, into a bucket. So that's basically a simple procedure of making apple cider. So, and we're going to try to do our own, but at the same time use this too just to get that feeling how they did it to 150 years ago. Okay, so that's ready to go whenever we get them baskets built. Over here, Al's working back on, which is the basket. We're going to come up with our own baskets because uh, um, we're, we want to obviously give it back to him, but this is basically the same size, and we got this strap, and we got it uh, true value, and we've got a lot of stuff from them, and I really appreciate them because they can hide, they can find a lot of stuff that most hardware stores don't have, but we come up with the creativeness of... of Using this strap and, and making it a little bit stronger going across here, and we're just going to, once we screw them all together, we're going to stand it up and roll it, and then actually put the, the rest of the screws in, and then we've got ourselves a basket. All right, so everybody's got their jobs that they're supposed to do. We've got an understanding of what's happening. Be safe out there, but we're going to see you tonight for the campfire, okay? All right. All right. All right. Sounds good. Out. Well, here it is, the end of the day, and we've made it. When we get that apple press all ready to go, 
We're going to have some uh, cider going and we're all going to sit course. around this campfire and enjoy it. Okay. And then what, what I was really impressed with was the fact that you were able to come through for us and the band that we had planned on coming in to audition for the, the wedding coming up this weekend stood me up. And I was beside myself and you knew it and you took charge of the fact that you called friends and the friends that we have uh, are the top of the line music players. They're great. Everyone has their own band, including you, Lou. And I do appreciate that. And we're going to take in for our thankfulness to have them come and play at, at different segments of our of our, our shows and events we got coming up. So why don't we here have a song? See if you can play that and let's, let's hear that again, would you? It's called A Country Life for Me. Right? Born on a farm, house and a barn. Without a house of real necessity. Get up early in the morning, go out in the barn. Oh, it's a country life for me. Throw down hay from the mound. And I, I was thinking of uh, as we're sitting around this campfire that I think I'm going to build a, a seat of honor. And by putting it there, whenever we have a guest, there's going to be a key person involved that we're going to use as a guest of honor. And the one main thing I want to let you know, guys, is that you be the one that makes somebody smile. So we'll see you next time. Say again, what is it I say? I don't mind just, working I, here. Well, the whole I'll idea just say is, right. I just love working. I don't mind working here. I can do anything. No, 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 no. Cut. Sorry, never mind. I <laughs>